Hey guys, Rob from Zboard Gaming here, and today we are back with another weapon guide. Today we are looking at the MG34 LMG for Modern Warfare. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is our infographic for the MG34. Uh, if you haven't seen any of our prior weapon guides, uh, you can go ahead and check these out. We have them for every single weapon for all the guns in Modern Warfare, and available at our website, zboardgaming.com, and go ahead and check out, I'll have a link in the description below as to how to get to all of those. So the MG34 unlocks at level 49, has a max level of 57. And as far as ratings, uh, it's basically an average gun, almost below average. Uh, even though it has one of the fastest time to kills of any weapon in the game, with a pretty easy to control recoil pattern and super high rate of fire, it carries with it some very heavy negatives. Uh, it has the worst overall mobility of any weapon in the game, and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. Uh, it also has the worst reload time and some of the worst ADS speeds. Um, if you want to use this gun, we'll give you some loadouts and show you how to use it later in the video. Uh, but for now, camo requirements are in the bottom left-hand corner. If you want to take a look at that, go ahead and pause the screen, take a look. Um, and as far as base stats, it's 46 damage to the head, 34 to the upper torso or chest, and then 31 anywhere else that lower torso or limbs. Only comes with a mag size of 50 rounds and has a fire rate around 860 to 870 RPMs. The ADS speed is very slow at 467 milliseconds. Uh, however, it does sport a very fast time to kill at 140 milliseconds, um, which, is, which is quite good. It's one of the best in the game. As far as reload times, uh, it's close to 8 seconds, which is the worst reload time in the game. Even the crossbow is about twice as fast as the MG34. Uh, you can see that you will pick up a couple seconds if you add sleight of hand, but you still will be waiting for a while. And with only 50 rounds and a very high rate of fire, you're going to have to reload fairly often with this weapon. So if you want to see all the attachments, we have them all listed here with all the unlock levels. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. Feel free to pause the screen if you want, take a look through these, or head on over to the website where you can check out the infographic and actually uh, save the image, download it if you want there. We have a couple loadout suggestions. We'll go ahead and get to those on the next page, and I'll do a lot more detail on the loadouts coming here later in the video. So, uh, as far as some of the advanced stats, uh, this is gun is basically going to be either a three or four shot kill, uh, regardless where you hit them at any range. Um, you can see here, uh, I'll break that out a little bit more as we go. Hardcore, if you're under 32 and a half meters, it'll be a one shot kill. Over, it'll be a two shot kill. Um, the effective drop off range is right at 32 and a half. Um, again, we talked about fire rate, ADS speed. Uh, the movement speed here is 83% and the strafe speed is 32%. We will go through and show you how bad that actually is compared to all the rest of the weapons on the next slide. Uh, the recoil pattern is straight vertical. You'll see that here coming up. If we look at some of the specialized attachments, um, the barrels, you have the FSS Brute, the FSS Stubby, and the FSS Elite. Uh, the Elite barrel for quite a while has been bugged. Uh, and actually is basically a duplicate of the SSS Brute Barrel. Um, I'm not honestly sure if that has ever been changed, um, but uh, keep that in mind when using it. Uh, you may not get that aim down sight speed that you're looking for with the Elite Barrel. Uh, as far as other special attachments, you have the 75 round and 100 round belt, and all these do is basically slow your ADS and your movement speed down even more. Um, which is not a good thing with this gun. So like we said, Pros has a very fast time to kill with a pretty easy to control recoil, um, but very slow overall, just with about everything. So when we talk about mobility, here's what we're talking about. I have a chart I put together and it's based off of numbers that the exclusive Ace has put together for all the movement speeds and strafe speeds. Uh, if you want, check out his channel. I think I have a link to that in the description below. But you can see here where the MG34 ranks. Um, it is 5% slower than the next slowest weapon, which is the PKM. And it has a, about a 2 or 3% slower strafe speed as well. 
So it is at the far bottom left hand corner of our mobility chart. Uh, when compared with the pistols in the upper right, even just the other LMGs, uh, this weapon is extremely, extremely slow. So, um, as far as recoil testing, we do all of our testing on Candor Hideout right here in this location. Um, it's 25 meters away from that far wall, and at this range, um, the MG34 will do that base damage, 46 to the head, 34 to the chest, and 31 everywhere else. So like we mentioned earlier, at this range, this will be either a three or a four shot kill. So let's go ahead and take a look at, um, on the left here, we have the base recoil profile of the MG34, and you can see it basically just goes straight vertical with a lot of jump. Now, I did not mark every single little bullet hole here, um, more just for time so that I could get the video out here. Now, two other attachments that typically help control vertical recoil are the compensator and the Merc 4 grip. And surprisingly enough, you can see that they really had no effect on this weapon. Um, actually, both of them pretty much had the exact same profile, and there really was no benefit of individually using either of these weapons. I'll get into the bipod on the next screen here. So here is what the bipod looks like. Now, um, the bipod says that it helps improve control while you're either crouched or prone. Uh, in a crouched position, you can see that there really is no benefit. Um, standing actually makes your overall profile worse in this case, which was quite surprising. Even though it tightens up a little bit of the horizontal recoil, uh, you can see from a vertical recoil standpoint, it's worse than just the normal base weapon. So basically, in order to get any benefit at all out of the bipod, you have to be prone, and you can see there really isn't a whole lot of benefit. Now, you do get some extra shots in those first couple bullets, which is good, um, but with such a low mobility weapon to begin with, now you're basically laying flat on the ground to get any benefit out of this attachment. So I really do not recommend the bipod whatsoever at any point in time. Um, it might look nice, but as far as a functionality standpoint, it really does not help very much. So let's go into some additional attachments and combinations and loadouts we can use on the MG34. Now keep in mind on the prior slide, the base recoil of this weapon is pretty much right at the top of the screen here where the top of this window frame is. So the first combination we looked at was actually this one right here in green, which is the Merc foregrip and the compensator. And you can see that did help out some. Um, we got a fairly decent recoil and probably knocked about 15 to 20% off that total vertical recoil. Then we looked at the operator foregrip and the ranger foregrip, and there really wasn't a whole lot of difference between either of these, and they slightly performed a little bit better than the Merc foregrip. So then we took this information along with what we had earlier, and we added some additional attachments to it for this loadout one. Uh, we added the rubberized grip. Um, we also added the tack laser. And you can see here that compared to just having the Merc foregrip and the compensator, this loadout really was no better than either of these other combinations we had. So we went to another loadout. Uh, this time we took a look at and we swapped out that Ranger foregrip and added the Operator foregrip. We got a little bit of improvement here, but again, on the whole, overall, slight improvement, really no different than just using the Operator foregrip and the Compensator. So adding that tack laser and the rubberized grip really did not seem to help much. So, we kept going. We decided to take a look, and this was about the best loadout we could get with the MG34. So what we had here was the rubberized grip, the compensator, and surprisingly, in this case, the Merc 4 grip, when added to this combination, performed better than the operator and the ranger. Now, I would also highly suggest against the operator 4 grip because it also adds a couple percent to your mobility, and like we already saw earlier, it's already really, really bad with this weapon. So, what do we do with the MG34? Now, we talked about how it's a three or four shot kill. So, with this loadout, you can see even on full auto, uh, you should do fairly well. But we have some tips for you here. So, the first tip we're going to give you is to mount your LMG whenever possible. It eliminates a lot of the horizontal recoil and provides very good overall accuracy. Here you can see that 
in the center, this particular recoil pattern uh, is loadout three mounted. So what we did here is we put a deployable cover right at 25 and we shot the same, this target right here using that loadout. And you can see it cut the horizontal and vertical recoil both by about in half. So if you get the chance, mount your LMG and they'll significantly improve your accuracy. Another tip we have for you is to fire the LMG in seven to eight shot bursts. The last thing you want to do is hold the trigger down as long as you can and start firing, or you're really going to have to work to control that recoil with your thumbstick or your mouse. So you can see here that using loadout three with seven to eight shot bursts, we are able to very easily control the recoil pattern and keep it pretty tight. So these are probably our two best tips we have for you. Mount the LMG and keep it in fairly short bursts of seven to eight shots, and you should perform fairly well. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, really, the MG34 is probably not the best weapon to use in the game. It's, it's quite hard to use, frankly. Um, it's not very mobile. If you want to sit back maybe on ground war, hold a location down, be accurate with your shots, um, that's really what this weapon is intended for. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. We got several more weapon guides coming out fairly soon. And uh, again, thanks for watching.